That's cool. what depression is. You're just mess. I mean, we know that. I watched the whole too. season of Love Island. Yes, which in one? In like three days. I think four. I watched them all. It was great. But um, <laughs> so basically reality TV was fun until you're not everyone's favorite. Wait, well, you got you- in trouble on reality TV for sitting in your room and watching reality TV? It was kind of meta. That's very yes. meta. Yes. Ooh, and it wasn't on their network. It wasn't. That's what they And they mm-hmm. let me say Love Island. <gasps> That's why they turned on yep. me. Yep. It's but good anyway, to be turned on. Are you done with the show? So I am not going back. Is I, that because you're engaged? I got engaged and like, <laughs> it's funny. I guess I'm the kind of personality where like, I don't just like smoothly fit in. Like I'm either like love you and like I'm all about you and loyalty or like if I feel like shit's fake, it's like I can't fake it with people. Yeah. And that's kind of what happened in my last season where I was like, ah, the vibes are not right. So... And were you already engaged that season? I had gotten engaged right after. Mm. But it's it's funny because the pre- previous season, I was like trying to fuck this hot model. And everyone was like, we love Hannah. And then I met this guy who came on the show. And we like were fucking in all these rooms. And they were like, Hannah's disgusting. And he ended up being the love of my life. So it just doesn't fully Wait, you met your fiance sense. on the show? No. Oh. I met him before the show. And then it was really lonely. And five weeks in, I'm like, can you please go? And visit? they're like, we'll just make this the storyline. Well, yeah. But I thought it was going like, to be like this romantic, like yeah. beautiful like thing. But instead, everyone's like, he didn't hang out enough with us. And I'm like, he's 45 and sober. But, um, but the thing is, I learned in my life, like you're going to have a lot of battles. And some battles, it's okay not to win. But I wasn't that great on reality TV. <laughs> No, you. I that's mean, if a you win, did three though. Three seasons like, of a show. I, two out of three, I was good. But I either come off like super authentic and everyone loves me, or they're like, "She's a cunt." And I'm like, mm, but, but I like you. All it's of good. us. It's like all we're authentic. Reality, like, it's like, like Annie. Like we would have had the same thing where people would love you for two seasons, and then you go a little too far, and of people course. are like, "She's kind of a bitch." No, but like, I would rather that than be like the one everyone got along with. That's so boring. Right? Yeah, and it's I mean, I there. wasn't even <laughs> fighting with them. It was like people. Like I fought with a bunch of guys who were like accusing me of shit, and I was like, "Don't talk to me like that." And everyone's like, "Hannah's an emotional crazy." You person. gave them TV. That's what I about did. the girls? Yeah. Were they nice or like did you get along with them? The girls were. They were, I actually did get along with the girls. But the guys teamed up against you. Well, I do think guys hate female comics. Like, Duh. non-female. Yes, that's what I'm saying. They that's literally like the would yell at me. He's so like, you're bad. not fucking funny. Your podcast sucks. And I'm just sitting there oh like, God. this is so me. I mean, it was called Cut Out. But I was sitting there and I'm like, dude, what's the actual problem with me? Because it's not the garbage. <laughs> And then I was like, maybe I should surround myself with people who want to be like creative and fun and talk shit. And like, that's where I'm at now. But it kind of, it was a, a tough part of my entertainment career where like I got a lot of hate online for a bit just because it's reality TV and that's what people love. Yeah. But I've, I'm so, I mean, I'm a comedian. Like, I I'm think like, I want just, everyone to love me and think I'm hilarious. It's not, I feel like you're just like, you're too weird and different for that group of people. It, yeah, that's the nicest thing anyone ever said to me. It's, it, I meant it as a compliment, so Thank that's you. good. Even though I was calling you bad things. Yes. <laughs> but um, I, I Esther's old podcast, her first podcast was Weird Adults. So yeah. <laughs> that's true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I loved it. But I didn't ultimately fit in. And it ultimately was my demise. It was good in the beginning. because It were, was like, great because I was like fun and different until I became popular. And then people were like, oh, we can tear this girl apart. Because I'm not actually good with social. Like I went to a bunch of different high schools. I don't really know the mean girl games. Yeah. I'm kind of like, we'll just be like, what? And or I'll cry. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is weird. When I'm, like, I'm good at like the funny, sarcastic banter. Yeah. But if someone's actually coming for me, I get scared. Yeah. Let's take a banana break. I have a question for you, Esther. But are my just... holy socks on brand with Sleepover by us? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh my God, you should have some with like holes in the crotch. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hannah, when when emotions um, run high mm. or when feelings are felt on this show, Even though they we weren't... take a potassium break. Or we just take one. Or you George like... waves a banana in the air. <laughs> that he is blows awesome. it. You guys can't see it. It's off camera. <laughs> you go, it's, deep deep, it's, it's deep throat time. And then he's like, it's your turn. I just had a big breakfast, so... <laughs> that's How the most shit that, I've ever heard. This was such an Esther. Make everyone do something she's going to sit back and watch and not do, participate I'm in. I'm going to watch you all blow bananas and jerk <laughs> off under donut. <laughs> this is your weird fetish. I'm, you're like, do you guys want to put a banana in your mouth? I, I think it's cool you run that. I like, um, I. I stand reality TV, so I. I mean, I fucking love reality TV. I, but I, I like love the watching it. Good, like, what happened to you? What you're telling me, I had, didn't watch the show. No offense. Not because of you. I, you'll be the only reason I would watch it. <laughs> if I'm being completely honest. Like, I will, do, is it weird if I go back and watch it? 
No, not at all. I the I. Because then I'm when I'll be back of... on and you know I'll have a lot to talk about. <laughs> I feel bad I don't know because I'm going to love it. And it's I'm a gonna great watch. I'm 100% going to be on your Everyone side. Everyone should watch it. I started season three. Wait, that you're not in? I wasn't in the first two seasons. Okay. Three, three to five. I'm oh, sorry. that's why. So you uh, came in like the cool. Yeah. Okay. And then they're like. Fuck you. Are there still original cast members? Yeah, it was the OG cast members that were like, we're done with you. Oh, okay, yeah. But like, while, we gave you a so shot. why are they for five summers can't find a, a lover? <laughs> <laughs> they're looking every summer for And they're mad at you because you found a guy. No, this is the problem. Having a healthy relationship on reality TV is very hard. Because first of all, when we'd be filming, they'd be like, okay, go hit on some bros at the bar. So I'd make eye contact with a guy. And I'm like, I could do this. But there's a camera guy and like four guys holding lights behind me. And I'm like, hey, guys would just run. <laughs> yeah. Or they'd talk to me and then afterward they'd be like, hey, can you sign this? And they're like, no, I'm a finance bro. Like, I don't fuck with this stuff. Mm. And then let's say you meet a nice guy and then you're like, hey, in three weeks I'm doing this reality show where you'd have to be a part of it. Or like people would not be happy that I can't hide parts of my life. Right. Oh. So, and then the kind of guys that do want to do reality TV with you are almost as problematic as male comedians. Oh. No, I that can imagine. That absolutely makes sense. Yeah. And then Jeez. I met a comic a couple, two weeks before the reality show named Dez. And we like got coffee, we hit it off. And I'm like, hey, I'm doing a reality show in a bit. And he's like, figure out your stuff. I ended up calling him like every night, just crying. Being like, there's, thir I just fought with 13 people and there's only seven people on the fucking cast. And he's like, that's <laughs> wifey material. <laughs> but I was like the worst with this guy. Like I was... Maybe he liked the drama subconsciously, but I was just like a mess. Then we'd like jerk off and then we'd like talk about life. Like it was tremendous. <laughs> it was like five hour phone calls. I was also sleep deprived during it, which didn't help my calmness during the fights. Oh, but you guys had phone sex? We would have phone sex late at night. I'd be on the phone from when filming ended to like 4 a.m. I would like go in the laundry room. Are and you FaceTiming like, or no? We do FaceTime. I'd go in the bathroom, FaceTime because there's cameras everywhere. That's what's so fun. That's why I pay for the live feeds of Big Brother because I'm trying to watch people it's like so masturbate and fuck. And you can always tell when they prop the pillow up. Like, so there's like a, it's almost like a little tent for them. The live feed of Big Brother, like that is actually better than the show. Yeah. I just want to hear the long, unedited, boring conversations. Right. Like nothing. And it's fun to like go, they're going to put that in. Like I'm always like, yeah, that's getting in the edit. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's the thing with reality. The filming is actually like pretty realistic. I mean, obviously there's moments where you have to like push a storyline, but it's the edit where they sh contextually put things to make whatever they want to make sense. And sometimes it is pretty truthful. And sometimes you're like, oh, you didn't have any other options. So that was like the craziest thing you're going for. But Des ended up coming on the show. I mean, though his agent was like, don't you dare, but he didn't tell him. And he, did he want to, or did you have to talk him into it? It was kind of like, we were in this very initial, like we had three hot dates and then I left. Yeah. So Ooh. it was this like mysterious, like, I just want to see you. And he's like, oh, you know, and I wasn't allowed to see him because of COVID. Because if I like met him oh, yeah. and got COVID and got everyone sick, like I'm fired. So he was like, come meet me. And I'm like, I literally can't, this is my job on the line. So he finally came and we just like hooked up, laughed, had fun. He left. And then I kind of moved in with him like two, three weeks after the show. It was a very interesting I dynamic. I kind of moved in. Mm -hmm. It was one of those things where he's like. It's just like weird when you leave and you're like, why would I leave? I'm, yeah, yeah. Like I'm going to just come back here anyway. But society makes it so romantic where a guy's like, here's the key. Yeah. Do you want to move in with me? And he was like, do you, you want to get your stuff and just like. And I'm like, I can't tell if you're comfortable with this or you're just trying to make me okay like i it was a very awkward Wait, like that's, i think that's how most moving in happens anyways I, at least for me and bobby i think on our third month together because i had a place what in long beach and we were so i lived your, an hour away i lived in long what, beach what was your place like was it i had a two-bedroom apartment it was, it was Beautiful. my place yeah we love um and i loved it i loved yeah, living fun. there but then bobby was like don't go home live with me in the squalor <laughs> You know, were this you, mound of shoes. Over, would you You're clean, such a would you lucky organize woman. and clean when you oh came Oh my over? God. I dedicated a whole month, my mom and I, to just redoing his entire apartment because I was like, if I'm going to live with you, <laughs> that's what this Des did happen. with your emotions. He was like, <laughs> he's like, I'm going to rearrange her emotions. <laughs> so, Des, I got a dumpster. 
<laughs> and I was like, honey, we need to throw some shit away. <laughs> and I'm not the neatest bitch, but I was like, we I put a dumpster in front of his house. And I think it was like this like metaphorical, like get that old shit out. Yeah. Cause and I'm not That's like kinda hot. Thank you. To just like wake someone up and go. A little scary though. When you- 